Hey, what's going on, everyone? James and Emerson, welcome back to another YouTube video. And today we're going to be going over the petitions and voter registration statistics, as long along with the primary results as of the week of Jan of March 9th, 2024. Now, before I get started, I just want to get some important things right out of the way. I'm going to start sorting these by expiration date from now on, just so you guys are aware. And um, yeah, as you guys can see here, for all unaffiliated petitions, they have been extended to. April 9th, 2024. I'm assuming this is probably because of Laura Baker getting enough signatures, and I think all they, I think, I'm guessing someone decided somewhere that they need unaffiliated voters to have more time, which I think is really good because I really want unaffiliated voters to get on the ballot. Like, for instance, Darren Warren just gained a few new voters this week. Now, honestly, with, with this new extended time that has recently been released, I really hope that Darren Warren and Shalane Edgerton get, get on the ballot. Now, on the day when the um, all the unaffiliated petitions expired, the certified date, or I mean, I'm sorry, the status that just said expired for like a day. So, actually, all unaffiliated petitions actually did end up losing a day, a day in total, through no fault of their own. But with that being said, here are the petitions for so far for Darren Warren since he did gain some new voters this week, some new signatures this week. I'm sorry. And lastly, War Baker, nothing has changed. And Shalane Edgerton, I think she did gain a few more signatures this week as well. So we're going to sort that out. And nothing else for unaffiliated. And next is the petition signatures for third parties. For people, for political parties trying to gain ballot access in North Carolina. I'm sorry, guys. It's the middle of the night. But anyways, the Constitution Party is literally less than 200 away from getting the signatures that they need. Like, goodness, I really hope they can get there soon so that they can get ballot access in 2024. I th I'm not sure. I think it's going to be too late for them. Honestly, I'm not sure because at the time that um, where people could potentially sign up to run for office as a member of a political party. The Constitution Party did not have ballot access. So, I'm not sure. I'm fully not too sure about it. Maybe there's like some laws. Who knows? Honestly, I'm not going to get too into it right now. As of right now, the Constitution Party is so close to getting ballot access, so let's keep an eye on that. Florida has gained nothing. Oh yeah, some interesting things have happened as well. The, um, the Justice for All Party of North Carolina which is actually a political party created by Dr. Cornell West, is actually trying to get ballot access right now. And not just that. The um, WXYZ New Day Party is also running for, is also trying to get ballot access as well. And I believe this party, I did remember going through this, this party's Facebook page, and I think it's like for this person right here, Demetra Weisinger, because I do remember seeing this person's name up on their... Um, Facebook page. I'll, I'll make sure to leave that in the description below, but, um, yeah, the We the People Party still only has 15 registered voters, and, yeah, with that being said, the all writing, all writing petitions are due on, um, August 7th, and, um, the Day of Kings Round Charter, nothing's probably gonna happen, due December 6th. Anyways, that's it for now, guys. Here are the statistics for last week, and here are the statistics for this week. Now, I'm gonna scroll through my calculator real quick. The Green Party gained two new voters. Okay, they the Green Party has been stuck between 2016 and 2062 for a while. Overall, they're flatlining. But hey, better that than the Libertarians who have lost five voters this week. Damn. That's unfortunate. But, um, however, once again, this week was also not a good week for voter registration. Only the Greens and No Labels actually gained voters this week. Speaking of, and speaking of No Labels, No Labels gained by six new voters. Now... The Democratic Party actually lost 189 voters, the Republican Party lost 74 voters, and unaffiliated voters lost 146. So, yeah, that's unfortunate, but now usually I'd be done, but given the fact that I do have access to the um, primary, to the primary results, let's actually go over it. Now, for this one, I'm probably going to go over, like, these five here, Federal, Council, State, NC State, NC House, and Judicial. I'm not going to go over the last two because I personally don't care. Now, I don't really care about judicial either, but I might just might as well just do it anyways, just because I feel like it. And let's go start with the federal races first. Now, for the Democratic primary, Joe Biden was the only person who was on the ballot, so of course he won it. 
and no preference got like 12.68% of the vote. Now for the Libertarians, now this is actually an interesting, a big plurality of the Libertarians actually voted for no preference, 2043. Yeah, turnout is much more lower for the Libertarians because they have fewer people, but dang, there were so many names on the ballot and no, no preference lost, no preference won over all of them. Wow. I really like the Libertarian Party's option for no preference or none of the above. I think we should have that in all races because I really think this, I feel if that's, if because if, if none of the above ever becomes like official on ballot, then maybe, maybe I might actually vote in most races. Just saying. But anyways, anyways, for the Republican primary, Donald Trump won by a majority. Yeah, yeah, we already knew this was going to happen. Nobody cares. Just like how nobody cares about Joe Biden. But anyways, let's look at the first district, the Republican primary, Lori Buckout versus Sandy Smith. And Lori Buckout actually won. This was actually a somewhat tight election, a tight primary election. And this one does have a libertarian. And for the second district, the Democrats did actually have, both the Democrats and Republicans did have a primary. But really there is, but there, by least in this district, there's also a green running. And I'm going to tell, yeah, you should vote for the green if you live in that district as well, just like how you should be voting Libertarian for the first district. You guys get the idea. I'm biased like that. But anyways, for the Democratic primary, Deborah K. Ross, the incumbent, actually won by a straight-up majority. It wasn't even close. And for the Republicans, yeah, Alan D. Swain also won by a majority. Maybe, maybe narrow, but straight-up, Alan Swain won fair and square. Now, for the fourth district in the Republican primary, Eric Blankenberg actually did ended up defeating Mahesh Max. Ganor Carr, yes, this person who, who wanted to run as an unaffiliated and like a little earlier did decide to run as a Republican instead, but um, Eric Blinkenberg won, not even close. And for the 5th District in the Republican primary, Virginia Fox, the incumbent, actually won by over two-thirds of the vote. And for the 6th District, for the, for the U.S. House of Representatives, I'm sorry, for the 6th District of the U.S. House of Representatives in North Carolina, this one was actually a very, very tight election. Now, this it seems to me to look like it was mainly between Addison McDowell, Mark Walker, and Christian Castelli. And that's actually really interesting with Bo Hines being not so far behind. And um, from the looks of it, Alice, Addison McDowell won by a very, very tough margin. In fact, let me see if I can pull up, like, the details if I can. Oh, and it looks like in the 8th district, this was also extremely contested as well, but mainly between Mark Harris Alan, and Alan ba ba Bacom with some other relatively strong Republican candidates. But, alright, here's the, um, here's the results for the 6th district. Whoa. Whoa. It was, it, wow. If you guys want to, of course, you can pause the results for yourself, and I might just put the links in the description below. And I'm I'm only gonna do this for like the tight elections, so like if it, if it's like a straight up majority, like straight up majority, not even close, then I probably won't consider doing um close close doing like close analysis on these elections. So. Oh, okay, wow, Mark Harris, really, really, okay, ooh, this is actually, okay, yeah, Alan Balcom got, did pretty, did well in this area right here, but everywhere else in the district, Mark Harris just won, and like, oh wow, Scotland County, just straight up, and Rob Robeson County, okay, all right, District 9, not even close, Richard Hudson, Ended up winning that. And for the 10th district, oh, yeah. Okay, for the 10th district, this one was really close between Pat Harrigan and Gray Mills, with Brooke McGowan performing somewhat solid, but it is what it is. Oh, yeah, I guess while well, I'm going to load that up, Chuck Edwards, the incumbent for the 11th district, actually won. And for the 13th district, oh, wow, the 13th district was very competitive. But first, let's go over the results for the 10th district. Oh wow, Pat Harrigan won every single county except Iredale. And Iredale, Gray Mills won by like a straight up majority. Like wow. 
and everywhere else. Would you look at that? Plurality support. I guess concentrating on Iria alone was not a good idea, but anyways. Um, but lastly is like the third. Oh, oh yeah, we still gotta review the 14th district. All right, the the 13th district was pretty close, and there was like a lot of candidates in the Republican primary. For the 14th district, both yeah, both primaries straight up won by a majority. Doesn't matter, but okay, let's take a look at the 13th district for a second. Kelly, wow. Holy cow. Oh, wow. Caswell was pretty close. Well, a few hundred votes could actually make the difference. All right. Person County. All right. All right. We got a Granville County. Holy cow. Fred Von Cannon won Franklin County by quite a bit. Um, Wake County. Oh, wow. Wake County was like the county to win. Wait, can holy cow, that was close. All right, Johnson County. There's, oh wow, Harnett County was also pretty close. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. And Lee County was somewhat also close as well. But I want before I close out this tab, I want to like go back to the Libertarians for just a second. Now the reason why because about none of the above stuff. I want I want to see what what on earth happened, like what happened. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Look at that green. Oh, yes, that is delicious. I wish that was the Democratic and Republican parties instead, but that's okay. But let's like let's take a look at the counties where none of the above actually lost and oh wow, none of the above only lost by like one vote. That's very depressing. Joshua Smith winning that one. And none of the above actually lost to a four-way tie for first place. There was a, This one was really a four-way tie for first place. Wow. And it's not just that. Look at, look at Sampson County. None of the above literally tied with David Trine Cavalier Dunlap. I'm assuming he misnamed Time Traveler for a reason, but look at Warren County. None of the above also tied with Mr. Time Traveler again and Joshua Smith. Green County, literally a three-way tie for first place and then for Jones County. A tie between No Preference and Joshua Smith. Holy cow. So many ties. Let's take a look at one that wasn't a tie. Joshua Smith. None of the above lost by two votes. Yeah, that is very depressing. And Edgecombe County, Chase Oliver ended up winning that one. Yeah, Chase Oliver did end up getting the next highest amount of votes, and wow. None, literally none of the above, Jacob Hornberger and Lars Mapstead literally lost by one vote. Yeah, with so few people voting in the Libertarian primary, it's really not a surprise that you're going to see small numbers. And look at Bernie County, by the way. Only one person showed up. Oh, that is depressing. Oh, and that person voted for Chase Oliver. So yeah, if you vote in the Libertarian primary, it actually does make a difference. Let's look at Gates County, and none of the above lost by one vote again, of course. And Camden County, okay, Jacob Hornberger won that one with three people tied for second place. Wow. And then lastly, Tyrell County, and literally only one person showed up. And they voted for a guy named Toad Anderson. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, my God. That is so funny. Oh. Oh. Oh, that is funny. But anyways, guys, that's it for um, the federal results. Now, let's take a look at the um, Council of States. Okay, Josh Stein won by a majority, of course. Establishment. Mike Ross won against Shannon Bray, so congratulations to Mike Ross. Mark Robinson won against Bill, Dale Falwell and Bill Graham. Okay, another establishment person. All right, Lieutenant Governor Rachel Hunt won by like over 70%. Okay, cool. And for, oh, that's for the Democratic Lieutenant Governor. And for the Republican, whoa, wow. The, the Democratic 
The Democratic primary for lieutenant governor was not competitive at all, but holy cow, look at how close that was. Seriously. Oh my god. How Weatherman won. I'm not going to go over all the results because, but um, here's the idea. Holy cow. Okay. It seems like there's a lot of fragmentation. That's what I'm interested in. It's the entire fragmentation. Like, okay. So, Sam Page did very well in this area. Deanna Ballard did well in fragmented parts. Looks like he, looks like they did well in rural areas. But, whoa. Okay. I'm not going to go over all that because that, that would take way too long and the video is already getting long enough. Let's go. Let's keep going. For Attorney General, the Jeff Jackson won by a majority. Okay, yeah. And wow, okay, for the NC Auditor, for the GOP actually had a very competitive election between Jack Clark and Dave Baliak, and Charles Dingy was not really far behind, actually. Okay, it, yeah, Jack Clark won most of the counties, but look at Mecklenburg. Okay, Jeff Tart did very well there. Let's take a look at Dave Baliak, Nash County, and Johnson County. And we take a look at Pamlico County, Charles Dimmy. Okay, this isn't bad. And this is the fragmentation. And again, I will not be going through every single county because that would take way too long. And um, for the agriculture, Steve Trockler, Trockler, the incumbent, actually lost. No, no, Steve Trockler won, actually. The incumbent actually won the primary. I'm sorry about that. And for NC Commissioner of Insurance, Natasha Davis won by a majority. And for Republican primary for NC Commissioner of Insurance, Mike Causey won. All right. And for NC Commissioner of Labor, okay. Well, well, okay, this one was actually a somewhat competitive election. Only a plurality of Republican support. Luke Farley ends up winning. And John Harvester actually ended up putting up a really good fight this time. And, okay, yeah, he won, like, most counties, but, um, at least we have a few regions as to where he did well. He did well in this area. In this, John Harvester did very well here, here, and here. And Chuck Staley did win quite a few counties. Okay, winning a majority of support in Columbus County. Okay, plurality of support in all, literally every other county that he won in. And, like, look at this. Majority, plurality, plurality. Look, look at the orange yeah, basically, basically, he, yeah, nobody else stood much of a chance. All right. And the Secretary of State, okay, that is interesting. Secretary of State, the GOP also had a very somewhat competitive election. Chad Brown won by, like, a hefty amount. Look at all the brown. But um, Jesse Thomas won, like, three counties, so we'll show you those counties. Oh, sorry. Feel free to pause again if you need to, and... Let's take like uh, Christine Via Verde, if that's how you pronounce it. Oh, oh, okay. She almost won a majority in this in Polk County. All right, more county. All right, she did pretty well in this in these urban counties, and it seems like she did pretty well in urban areas. So, well, obviously not all these are urban areas, but like you get the idea. Anyways, uh, okay, yeah, sorry for blanking out a moment. All right, for the superintendent of public construction, for the Democrats. All right, majority for Mo Green. And, oh, yeah, for the Republican one. This is an interesting one. Michelle Morrow, which I, who I believe is a Trump supporter from what I've read, actually ended up unseating Catherine Truitt. So, congratulations to her, I guess. And, yeah, let's move on. All right, for NC Treasurer, for the primary, Wesley Harris won by a majority, like, almost two-thirds of the vote. And lastly, NC Treasurer was actually somewhat of a tight election. Hmm, interesting. Well, let's see why it got so close. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so from what I'm seeing here, Brad Briner actually won, like, most of, like, the central North Carolina. But obviously, that. AJ Dowd had had like very had very scattered support. It's it's all look like look at it. AJ Dowd had very scattered support and 
Rachel Johnson also had very fragmented support with strong support in the eastern region, mostly in the western region. Though that was basically though she was no though Rachel was competitive with Bryner when it comes to the western area, and she did very well in this area as well. So we got so demographically we have a more a better idea of where the support came from, and so that's actually really exciting. And now let's go over to the um, NC Senate. All right, the Republicans won. Okay, Bob Brinson won a majority. Scott Lasseter won a majority. Dan Blue for, for the Democrats won a majority. All right, yeah. Most of these races are just two race, two person races. Sophia Chitlick, Donna Van Hook, Dem, Rhonda Mays, majority. Democratic primary, Paulo, majority again. And, oh, okay. Our first a contested Democratic primary. Okay, let's take a look. So it looks like Caleb Theodros has won. And Caleb won by a decent margin. And, all right, this one just for NC Senate. It, it's all just in Nashtown. No, not Nashtown. Um, Mecklenburg County. Um, yeah. Wow. I guess that makes sense. I guess the district is just in Mecklenburg County. I guess that would make sense. All right. Um, Republican, all two-person race, and two-person race. Okay, that's it for NC Senate. Let's go for NC House. All right. For the third district. Oh, the third district for State House is actually very competitive. Okay, so it's so Linda Moore, Linda G. Moore ended up winning against two other Democrats. Let's see where our support came from. All right, I, okay, the district is literally just in Craven County. Okay. All right. So, ninth district, Dem, Democratic primary, two person race, Republicans, two person race. Okay, so Claire Kempner won, Timothy Reader won. Katie Tomberlin won. <laughs> Tomberlin, but whoa. Okay, I know this for, this was a two-person race, so that's why. But wow, this 14th district for the Democratic for the Republican primary was actually very close. Like wow, it was like super close. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, that's actually good to know. Dem 23rd district. Dem Shelley Willingham won. All right, 25th district. Alan Chester won by two thirds majority, almost two thirds, but rather. All right, the 27th district was actually a very competitive primary in the, for the Democrats. Okay, let's take let's count. Okay, this holds three counties. So, Ron, Rodney Pierce ended up winning the primary with most of his support coming from Halifax County and. Michael Ray actually won a majority of support from the other two counties, but I'm guessing Halifax is like the populations where you gotta be. All right, that's actually really interesting. Anyways, all right, let's see. Larry Larry Strickland won the Republican primary for the 28th district. All right, 33rd district. Monica Johnson Holster Hustler won by not even close. Mike Scheitzel won by majority, and for the 35th district. The Okay, okay, no, another competitive primary for 42. Okay, 42nd district. That's going to be... Okay, so Mike Colvin actually won against a very somewhat competitive four-person primary. Courtney Banks and McLaughlin did not so great, but there were two quite, two very strong Democrats this, in this one competing against Mike Colvin, so wow. All right, anyways... All right. Oh, for the oh yeah, the Libertarians did have a primary in the 44th district with Christina uh, Christina Roggs beating Angel Yaquin. Oh wow, look like look at it. This was like a four-person difference. Given how small that the Lib that the primary was for the Libertarians, I think it's more important to just like. All right. So which county was this? It's in Cumberland County. Okay. All right. So let's see here. For the 48th district, Ralph Carter won by basically not even close. Mark Brody won easily. Um, Alan Branson won easily. And for the oh, see how Brockman actually won by a close margin in this one. 
All right. This, okay, what is this for again? The um, 60th district. All right, that's good to know. And it's in Gold, Guilford County. All right. Just, just checking, just checking. And okay, for the Republicans, the 62nd district was actually somewhat primary. John Bluffs easily blew it all out, but it was a close race for a second between these three right here: Britt W. Moore, Michelle C. Bardsley, and Ann Schneider. And with Jackson Barber getting ten percent of the vote, interesting. I know I keep saying interesting, but I don't know what else I can add. And all that's coming from Guilford County again. Okay, what I'm I'm guessing right here is Guilford County is so like there's like a there's like a big city in Guilford County that there's a lot of, that there's probably a lot of people living there, so that's probably why Guilford County has like multiple districts. So yeah. In case some of you are confused, for the 65th district, Reese Pirtle won a land won by a landslide. Cody Honeycutt won the Republican GOP primary in District 67. Dean Arp won in 69. Amber Baker won by one. Jonathan Almond won this one, but I don't say I don't think it was close enough. Um, Amy Taylor North won by a landslide and. Okay, for the 80th district. Okay, the 80th district was like very close. Okay, let's go ahead and look this up. In Davidson County. Alright, it was all in Davidson County. Alright. Okay, 82nd district. Wow, this one was actually a very close vote as well. Hmm. Alright, all that was in Cabros County. All right, here we go. 52nd dish, no, no, 83rd district. Yeah. Mm, was is it close enough? No, I think I would like for it to be a little closer before I grade it, but I don't think it will matter. But 84th district. Okay, Jeffrey McNeely won by a handy margin. Oh, a plurality of support, and with Blair Blair Evans won, winning a lot of the vote. Okay. Stony I has screened it very well, actually, with their very impressive. And from what you can okay, two counties. Alright, literally Blair Evans just blew almost won a majority straight up, but Alexander County was actually very close. Dang. The Alexander County GOP must be very divided on must have been very divided. Okay. All right, Beth Gardner, Hellfreak won a landslide. Nicole Sidman won by a landslide. Carla Cunningham won by a landslide. Kelly Hastings won by a landslide. Ooh, District, and lastly, District 111 for the NC House of Representatives. Wow, this is actually a pretty close race between Paul Scott and David Allen. Ooh, but it looks like Paul Scott won. Ooh, okay, this was like two counties. Paul Scott won a lot of, won a majority in Rutherford County and for David Allen. Wow. David Allen actually won like a majority of like Cleveland County. So wow, this was a pretty very close election, very indeed. But from the looks of it, it looks like Paul Scott's lead for lead in Rutherford County was bigger than David Allen's lead in Cleveland County, despite Cleveland having having a having more people vote. In that primary, so I think because Dave, Paul, because Paul Scott had like a bigger lead, and not to mention that Paul Scott actually won like a straight up majority in Rutherford County in this district's primary. Yeah, Paul Scott's lead in this county was big enough to overtake David Allen's lead in Cleveland County, so that's how he won. So that was pr pretty tough, but congratulations to Paul Scott, I guess. And lastly, the um. The, 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 the justice seat. Oh, Allison Riggs won. Okay, Chris Freeman won. And okay, this okay, this one was very competitive. Okay, let's look let's look it up. And obviously I'm gonna have the links in the description below for you guys to want to check it out. And okay, this is in New Hanover County. Alright, cool. Alright. Georgia Nixon won, Takia Lewis Blaylock won, Jamal Summy won, Alicia Slaughter won by a landslide, 
Ahmed W. Turk won by a landslide. Cindy Kidney looks to be Kenny won by a landslide. Renee Jordan won by a this was a two person race, so yeah. Blair Williams won easily. Crystal Grimes won by a landslide. Brian E. Lewis won very well. So did Walter Trip Baker the third. Charlene won by Armstrong won by a landslide. And the twelfth district, okay, this all right, this seat right here was pretty competitive. Okay. Dang, how long have I been recording for? I really, really need to end this soon. All right, this is in Guilford County. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, Brian Tomlin gets landslide. Tamaki o S. Gauze won by a landslide. And a good win by one by a landslide. Okay, this one was very competitive. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hurry this up so that all of you can, like, enjoy your day or something. All right, this is from, okay, from Forsyth County. Okay, cool. Yeah, literally. All right, Courtney Marlowe won by a landslide. Adam E. Anderson won by a landslide. Megan Shepard won by a landslide. Robin Lee Merrill won by a landslide. Meredith Presley Stone won by a landslide. Virginia Hornsby won by a, won by a handy margin. And Sarah Kirkman won by a landslide. And... Yeah, that's about it. I'm sorry this video took longer than usual. I just wanted to talk about every election result for these races. And I, I'm i looking forward to the general election where I'm probably going to do this again. I won't do off your elections just because I think I don't, I straight up don't care. But you know what, guys? That's going to be it for now. I'm sorry this video was long. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.